Last year in Beijing, we recorded China Summit, but this year we recorded Asia Summit. So it's our great pleasure to have a professor from South Korea to give us a presentation on MTCP user space step. Welcome. Ni hao ma? Hello. Uh, unfortunately, I, I can't speak uh, uh, Chinese. I'm, I'm Korean. I can speak Korean if you want. Uh, so I, I understand I, I stand between you and lunch, so I'll try to uh, finish the talk as soon as possible. Okay, is my uh, slide ready? Okay, uh, okay. So this is the first uh, uh, slide. So I'm going to talk about MTCP, which is um, a fast usual level voltage stack on DPDK. So this is a collaboration with a bunch of my students. Uh, in Young, Shine, Asim. Actually, Asim is the project lead. He is actually managing the code at um, GitHub. And then there are a bunch of other students too, uh, Hyewon and Sangwan, and uh, my colleague, uh, Jung Sun Han. I'm from Kaist in South Korea. So if you look at any single machine of the internet, actually, these days, the short TCP flows actually dominate uh, the internet. So according to a recent study, uh, over 90% of all flows, TCP flows, are having a uh, size of smaller than the 32 kilobytes. And about, uh, over 60% uh, of all flows are actually smaller than 4K. And this is measured in uh, one of the commercial ISP in South Korea for seven days. Uh, so what, what this means is that these small flows actually have a performance impact in middle boxes deployed in the internet, as well as the web servers, heavy uh, busy web servers in, uh, deployed in the data center. So let's think about TCP performance. So when, it, when, it, when we talk about TCP performance, um, we don't worry too much about large flows. So it's relatively easy to fill up the large pipe, like 10 gigabits per second uh, pipe with large flows. But when we talk about uh, small flows, uh, there is a fundamental dif uh, difficulty here. It's, re it's really hard to uh, saturate the uh, 10G uh, link, regardless of uh, how many CPU cores you use. There are two important issues behind this. One is that, first, you need to handle a lot of uh, packets per second. So when you're talking about uh, saturating 10, 10 G uh, uh, link, you need to handle 14.88 million uh, packets when you're talking about this uh, minimum size packet of 64 bytes. And also, the kernel, the uh, uh, gen uh, gen general purpose kernel, actually, is not actually uh, the designed for multi cores. It's designed a long time ago. So the API is not really suitable for uh, multi-cores. So we did a simple test to show uh, this problem. So we measured the number of connections you can actually uh, create per second using a server. The server is do, uh, what the server is doing is re uh, really simple. It, it just accepts connection and closes connection in a tight loop. So we, sh we measured the performance over the number of CPU cores. And as you can see, uh, the, the performance slightly goes up up to uh, uh, CPU number two, uh, the two uh, you, when you use uh, two CPU cores. But the performance goes down dramatically if you increase the number of CPU cores because there are lots of contentions there. So to, more, to know more about this problem, actually we have a more realistic uh, uh, setup. So we have a light HPD, uh, in this, and then uh, we have the server to serve uh, 64 by very tiny response uh, per each connection. And we use eight, eight CPU cores, and then we saturate this all CPU cores. CPU cores are 100% utilized. And then we measure the performance. And then we actually uh, do the profiling, and we found that the, the majority of CPU cycles are actually spent in, inside the kernel. So uh, only 70% of CPU cycles are left to the application. So if you optimize your uh, application, the web server, uh, the, the level of performance improvement you expect is a little bit small because most of the 83% of CPU cycles are spent in, uh, in the kernel. So clearly there's a problem in, in the kernel side. Why is this happening? Uh, there are uh, many problems actually. So I'll, I will, I'll talk about all these in more details, but uh, 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 overall there is contention due to the shared resources in the kernel. And also CPU, util uh, CPU cache utilization is not great. Uh, when you use the uh, existing kernel architecture. Also, the existing kernel does not do batch processing. So you process per one packet at a time. 
But if you remove all these using uh, our solution, MTCP, usual MTCP, then you can use the CPU cycles more efficiently by a factor of 2.4 times more CPU cycles given to uh, the application. And, and then uh, we can improve the performance of application by a factor of three to up to, up to 25 times, depending on the application. So I'll talk about the, this bottle in, in more details. First bottleneck is the uh, contention due to the shared, shared resources. Uh, let's say you have multiple cores, and then you're receiving the packets using uh, receive side, uh, receive side scaling hardware feature. That's very good to uh, distribute the packets to uh, 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 multiple core, uh, multiple queues that it is linked to each core. That's fine. But the problem is that if you're listening on a one queue, let's say you're running on, running on a web server. Web server is supposed to listen on port 80. No matter how many, uh, uh, no matter how, how many uh, threads you have. So the accept performance, right, it's actually completely serialized because of this lock, okay? Another problem is that if you have, if you have a multiple threads in a process, if you do a lot of uh, uh, close, uh, you, do, well, you do a lot of accept and close, and then when you call accept, the kernel is supposed to find the smallest file descriptor that's not used in that process. That's a requirement by POSIX. So and then that search actually is a linear search, and that's going to be very slow. Okay, so uh, there's two problems related, related to this. Another problem is that the, uh, the CPU cache utilization is not optimal. So when packet arrives, of course there is there has to be an interrupt handler, and that's running on the one CPU core. But the problem is that the application processing core is not the same as the uh, the interrupt handler core. So uh, the interrupt handling core is not the accepting core. So CPU cache, uh, there's lots of bouncing between CPU, uh, CPU cache uh, uh, handling uh, interrupt and the application processing. So the, uh, the utilization is not great. The third problem is that the existing kernel does not support batch processing. Uh, actually, it doesn't really matter uh, if you're dealing with a large content. Right. If you are calling read and write for 64, byte, 64 kilobyte content, it's not a big problem. But when you're dealing with 64 byte uh, co content, frequently calling the uh, system calls is, is, it could be a bottleneck. So in the, in the bottom level, actually, uh, per packet processing is inefficient. So every time a new, new packet arrives, you need to allocate the, packet, allocate the metadata for, for the packet and deallocate it when, the, when you're done with packet. So lots of CPU cycles are spent on the packet processing. According to our study in 2010, up to 60% of all CPU cycles are spent on, on, on memory allocation and deallocation on, on packet IO, actually. Above there, uh, there is a uh, uh, system call overhead. So the system, when, when the system call, when you frequently call system calls, you change the mode between the user level and, and the uh, uh, kernel level. Then that pollutes the CPU caches, and then that uh, greatly degrades the performance. So there are actually multiple works uh, to improve the performance of the kernel bottleneck. So uh, Linux 2.6 is old uh, 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 kernel that does not provide any uh, uh, solutions to these problems. But uh, Linux uh, 3.9 actually introduced a nice feature called uh, SO reuse port. You can, have, you can have a per port queue, uh, per, queue uh, per core queue. So you don't have to share this uh, listening queue across uh, multiple uh, threads. That's a good thing. Uh, another work, uh, Affinity Accept, actually improves on uh, connection locality. So you, you try to match the interrupt core and the application core at the same time. Megapipe was the, uh, the latest work before our work, actually. Uh, it does all of this. It, it actually, it actually uh, does the uh, batch processing. But of course, you, can use, you need to use a custom API, like uh, uh, IO, IO completion port. But even if you use this latest work, still about 80% of CPU cycles are spent in kernel. So there is some, uh, some bottleneck that's not really addressed by these work. So our question here is that, can we actually, how much performance we can actually improve if we uh, implement all this TCP processing in the user level? Okay. So we created, uh, we built a MTCP, which is a high performance user level uh, TCP stack 
designed for, optimized for uh, multi-core uh, systems. So our approach is clean, clean slate approach. Let's divorce the <laughs> complexity of the kernel and try to build everything uh, on top of the DBDK. So we, we solve these problems, contention due to the uh, shared resources and then uh, CPU to, uh, uh, inefficient CPU utilization by having each individual core work independently. So we show that we don't have to have the, uh, the shared resources across the cores, and then uh, we have the affinity to the uh, uh, resources. Also, we support the batching at the, at, uh, uh, from the bottom of the uh, processing all the way up to the application. So we apply, extensively apply the batching from flow processing uh, from uh, 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 packet IO to entire uh, the application. I will show uh, this technique later. And then we provide API, which is very similar to Berkeley Socket API. So it's very easy to migrate uh, the existing application to using uh, MTCP API. Okay. So here is the overview of the MTCP stack. So at the bottom level, there is hardware, NIC, and then uh, NIC driver, actually. And then there is a DPDK software level, user level. And then for each core, we run TCP stack. And that's run, at, run as thread, just, just speed thread, actually. And on top of that, there is an API level. And then your application is running as a separate uh, thread. But these, each core, right, has these two threads pinned to it so that you don't actually uh, interfere with other processing with uh, other uh, uh, threads and in, in, uh, uh, affinitized to other core. So I'll talk about the th thread model first, and then I'll, I'll explain the uh, batch, batch processing, and also I'll, I'll introduce the API. So here is the thread model. Thread model is very simple. We, we support um, uh, shared nothing parallel architecture. The basic idea is that you uh, distribute your load balanced packets coming to you to uh, multiple CPU cores. And then we divide the uh, load by the TCP connection instead of individual per, uh, packet. So on the bottom layer, there is a per packet, uh, a per core uh, packet queue. And then uh, in the hardware, you use uh, receive size scaling. But instead of just using receive size scaling, we use symmetric receive size scaling. What, is, what, what this is that, uh, uh, the, all the packets that belong to the same TCP connection are actually hashed to the same queue, regardless of direction. So if you just use a receive size scaling, right, the upstream packets and downstream packets, even if they, they belong to the same uh, connection, may be uh, distributed to the different uh, queues. So we have actually have a technique to make, this, uh, make the uh, RSS to produce the same hash value regardless of the, uh, uh, the direction. So uh, that's there. And then on top of the, uh, the usual level, uh, it's everything the same. So, so you, uh, each core has processed one nth of uh, connections. And then, uh, and then that's independent of each other. And then each core has its own listening queue. And each core has its own file descriptor space. So file descriptor space is not shared. So we actually deviate from uh, projects uh, standard. So another thing is that how do you actually reduce the, uh, uh, the overhead of uh, frequent system calls? But when you think about it, uh, we, are, we are implementing all this in user level. So like theoretically, there is no system call, actually. So we don't, we don't need to worry about it at all. But the problem is that we are converting the system call, read, write, accept this kind of system call to context switch, right? So you have the application thread, in order to do the TCP stack processing, you need to uh, switch, switch it to the TCP thread, right? And then uh, context switching is much more expensive than system call, about like 10 times more expensive, actually. So how do we actually solve this problem, okay? So we solve this problem by batching. So we amortize the uh, overhead by uh, processing uh, multiple packets and events at, uh, at the same time. So how do we do this? So when the packet comes in, Okay, uh, packets are queued, and then TCP thread is running, and then uh, it, it reads, it processes one packet at a time. But some, some packet, right, generates the event, right? This is a new connection. This is a, uh, uh, this brings on, uh, the new data for some uh, connection, right? 
So instead of just switching back to the application right away when there is an event, actually we process packets uh, that are stored uh, in the uh, RxQ right uh, at once. Actually, you, might, you may see some uh, uh, latency here, right? Batching actually increases latency, but you can actually limit the latency if you want uh, by, by having a threshold of the number of packages you process per, per, per given time. So, so when, when you're done with uh, Rx side processing, we actually mark the uh, accept queue and event queues, and then, and then you switch back to the application, okay, application thread. The application was waiting on the events using probably using uh, uh, epoch wait. Okay, then when it wakes up, it reads the uh, these uh, the events from the accept queues and event queues and process that, and then it, it may create a new event. So this has to be connect. There's a new connection uh, event, and then these these packages need to be uh, written and uh, should be uh, transmitted to our side. Right. Again, here we apply the batching. So instead of uh, doing the work right away, unless it's critical, like uh, like ACK, right? Uh, uh, we we uh, gather all these events and process them at the same time. Okay, so that's how we actually apply the uh, batching. So this is kind of similar to vector packet processing, actually. So the same uh, idea actually is is uh, uh, spread to other other areas as well. And then one nice thing about this uh, this is that the TCP thread and application thread are in the same process, so they can actually share the memory efficiently, okay? without, without, without creating a shared memory. Okay. The third point that we can make is that the, uh, it's very easy to use MTCP. Uh, our MTCP API, we designed the MTCP API uh, to look like, to very similar to, uh, to that of the BSD, Berkeley Socket API. In order to use it, you can just have uh, MTCP on the bar. So a socket becomes MTCP on the bar socket, accept becomes uh, MTCP on the bar accept. And we adopt the uh, event, we, we assume that we are using the uh, event-driven architecture. So we, uh, the event notification uh, uh, the approach is the uh, readiness model, which is the same as EPO and KQ, uh, et cetera. So we actually, uh, the number of applications, existing applications to using uh, uh, MTCP, uh, and then number of uh, modification, code modifications is pretty small, like HPD, Apache Bench, AB, and the SSH hater is our uh, uh, SSL proxy that's using the GPU to offload the cryptographic operations to GPU for performance, but later we found out that the TCP, TCP was the bottleneck. So actually we, we, we ported uh, uh, this work to uh, using MTCP and improved performance. I'll show the uh, result later. Uh, web replay is web log replayer. And the number of lines is actually, uh, number of modification lines is actually small, but the, the most part, the most time consuming part is to understand the existing code, to find the, uh, the, uh, the talking code, actually. So here is just a list of the APIs. So we have socket, bind, listen, and accept, connect. It's very similar to, uh, to the existing API. Read, read V and write, write V, close, abort, et cetera. And then uh, there are these things. Actually, if you go to our GitHub, uh, we have main pages uh, of uh, each, each of these functions uh, uploaded today, actually. <laughs> so how do you do server programming? It's very similar to EPO programming. So you have this, and then you create the socket, so listening socket, and then uh, you try to bind, and then listen on it, and then you call EPO create, and then inside the loop, you, you wait uh, the events using EPO wait. Okay. Same as client code, uh, you create EPO, and then you try, try to connect. Okay. So in implementation, uh, this is, we have about uh, 12,000 lines of code. Uh, we process the, uh, we deal with uh, packet IO and uh, flow management, uh, user level uh, socket API and uh, event system library. And uh, it originally supported our uh, library called uh, Package Shader IO Engines, published in 2010. That's kind of similar to DPDK. Uh, but now we support DPDK and then we are going to support NetMap and other 
uh, thing as well. We also support PCAP, I think. And then uh, we conform to the original uh, TCP protocol, uh, follows uh, RFC uh, 793. And then uh, we have uh, the current congestion control is new Reno. But if you want to implement other things, you can implement it. It's open source. And then we actually did some uh, uh, correctness test and uh, stress test. And then uh, it's reasonably usable. Okay. So in evaluation, I'll show, I'll try to answer these questions. Does really the performance uh, scale over uh, CPU cores? Uh, performance comparison with uh, previous, previous solutions. Also, does it improve the performance of real applications? So we have a light HPD evaluation as well as the SSL proxy. And then, uh, so MTCP was released about two years ago. And then there are uh, a few uh, number of actually uh, third party companies uh, uh, using MTCP to do the evaluation. And then I'll show uh, two examples here. So the evaluation setup is uh, we made mainly measure the number of uh, uh, HTTP transactions for small, uh, small uh, responses. So it's a server, in a server we use Xeon E5-2690 CPU, eight cores, and then, uh, uh, it has 32 gigabytes of memory and one NIC, but it has two ports. And then we have uh, five uh, uh, client machines with the same uh, CPU spec, uh, same spec as the uh, server. So here is a, a multi-core scalability uh, experiment. So in this setup, we, we measure the number of messages uh, uh, per, uh, per, per, per second. And then it, for, each, for each connection, for each TCP connection, we send uh, one minimum size packet, 64 byte packet, and then receive a 64 byte packet, and then disclose, uh, the closed, closed connection. No persistent connection, okay? It's very, uh, heavy connection overhead and the small packet processing overhead. So the red line is Linux, uh, the plain version, uh, 2.6, but actually the same as uh, 3.10 and the 4, actually. The, it's the TPS, uh, TCP stack has not changed a lot. Uh, the performance actually degrades, as we, we saw earlier, you know, due to the shared listen socket and due to the uh, uh, contention in the uh, uh, shared resources. But if you use reuse port, the per core listen queue per thread. Then it improves performance a little bit, but the, there's a limitation. Uh, if you use uh, the Megapipe, which is the uh, latest work uh, before our work, uh, then it, it shows uh, uh, linear scaling, but the scaling, the slope uh, isn't that stiff. But if you use our stack, actually it improves performance a lot. So it, it improves the performance of the existing kernel by, uh, by a factor of 25, and, and uh, the latest uh, the research work by factor of three when in this uh, harsh environment, actually. We actually uh, measured the uh, light HPD's performance uh, after uh, um, uh, migrating light HPD to using uh, MTCP. And we simulated the SPEC Web 2009 static uh, file workload. And it shows about 3.2 times faster than Linux performance and 1.5 times faster than Megapipe. So the performance improvement in real environment is, looks to be a little bit smaller than our micro benchmark. Do you understand why? Okay, so note that we are, uh, we are optimizing network stack. But if you look at here, we are dealing with files. So there is also file IO. And that, that file is very small. So frequent file is for each connection, each, each request. And then that, that goes, we suspect that that's the, uh, the bottleneck here. Uh, we also tested the, uh, evaluated the SSL proxy called uh, SSL sh uh, shader. Uh, we use uh, this, uh, the 1024-bit RSA, 128-bit uh, AES, and HMAC SHA-1. Uh, and then we, we downloaded one byte object from, uh, via, via HTTPS. So it, it shows the performance about, uh, it improves the performance of Linux stack by about 30% uh, to 40% uh, when you use a lot of uh, more, uh, many uh, concurrent flows uh, when you're dealing with uh, SSL proxy. Okay. So I'll introduce uh, two third-party evaluations. This is not done by us, uh, but I cannot uh, expose the name here. Third-party one uh, actually ported uh, HA proxy, which is a load balancer, 
to using uh, MTCP, and they report that uh, two times performance improvement for uh, small flat transactions. We don't, I don't, we don't have uh, actually more detail about this experiment. But uh, the third party uh, two uh, port the Nginx, similar to Light HPD, but uh, more efficient, I think. And then uh, the experiment ship services like this. They use two CPUs, uh, and then uh, one CPU has 18 uh, cores, and then uh, 32 gigabyte memory and 80 gigabits per second NICs, two 4G, 40, 40G Intel NICs, and they use a DPDK uh, 2.2, and Nginx release is, uh, uh, version is 1.9.6. And then client is, has the same spec as server. And then I'll show the results, but we actually plan to merge these patches into MTCP GitHub. They kindly agreed to contribute the source code, actually. So this measures the uh, CPS, the HTTP connections per second. So how many connections actually you can make? So uh, they, they make a connection and then uh, re uh, received one, one packet, one kilobyte uh, uh, response. And what it sh shows is that the MTCP shows about three times better uh, performance than the existing kernel. So the red line uses just a small number of TCP listening port, and then uh, the, the, the green line shows using the multiple CPU, uh, CPU uh, uh, multiple TCP ports, but the performance Im improvement is limited to other bottlenecks, okay? And then uh, up at the maximum, actually, uh, uh, two, C two, two clients were not enough to saturate the, uh, the, uh, the server. So probably the performance will go a little bit higher, go, go up a little bit higher. And this one shows the uh, response, responses per second metric. So uh, they uh, create the connection and then use, reuse the connection uh, to measure the uh, uh, the number of uh, responses you can uh, you can cr you can perform per second, and it shows about a 50% improvement when you use all uh, 36 uh, workers, and then it shows that the uh, performance actually scales over uh, uh, number of CPU cores. Okay. So here are some features that are being uh, developed now. Uh, we now support the multi-process. So we in the initial work, we assume that the, uh, uh, the developer uses one, one process and that, which has multiple threads. And these threads are pinned to each, uh, to each uh, CPU core. But then uh, it, it is somewhat hard, hard to port the existing single-threaded uh, network application because they may use uh, many uh, global variables. So it's easier to port these uh, single-threaded single network application to use multiple processes. So we actually support multiple processes, share the same uh, CPU, uh, sa same uh, TCP stack. Uh, also, the third party actually con uh, contribution includes the uh, TCP uh, segmentation offloading. So we didn't support that, but uh, they agreed to, uh, to contribute the source code for uh, TSO. And then we'll, we'll plan to support virtualization. And then there is some problem in zero copy. We don't uh, opt completely optimize the code. There is some uh, memory copy between the uh, DPDK buffer to uh, uh, TCP flow buffer. Uh, and then I, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what I'm going to, what I'm currently working on, what we are working on. So beyond MTCP, t t TCP stack, actually we are working on a network stack for middle box. Are there anyone who are, who are working on uh, middle boxes? Like uh, uh, DPI, uh, 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 a staple firewall, et cetera, staple NAT, et cetera. So we argue that there has to be a nice network API for these middle boxes. So in order to uh, build IDS, it requires lots of source code, like more than 100,000 uh, lines of code. And if you look at uh, one of these uh, popular IDS code, Snort, Srikata, this is all open source. It's very difficult to understand source code. Uh, and the one problem I see is that the many code is uh, intertwined with the networking stack. So you are uh, dealing with uh, uh, TCP state in another, mod another module. And then uh, that's complicated. There's lots of dependency between the modules. Okay? So TCP flow management is very complex, and it's error-prone. 
and, it's, and in most stacks, it's not complete. They implement subset of the uh, TCP flow, flow managers, not all. But if you think about the regular TCP applications, like MTCP-based application or Linux-based application, right? Uh, the separation between the application and the stack is clear. You have a nice API. So even if you don't know TCP, TCP you can write, still write a TCP application. So if, as long as you understand Berkeley Socket API. You create a socket, connect, and then read and write. That's it, right? You don't need to understand the like, scene sent or fin received, et cetera, right? But that's different from, that's a different for a middle box. Middle boxes actually deal with intra TCP state, right? Whether this packet was retransmitted. And the content of retransmitted packet is actually the same as the original packet. If it's not, maybe this is an attack, right? They work on this level, not on top of the uh, TCP level. So if you actually look at this, this source code, they, uh, they deal with packet instead of flow. So PCAP API, and then they deal with uh, the packet level event, and then they create their whole stack, the TCP, uh, TCP flow management stack, uh, and then that's different for each application, right? So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that why not have just one API? That you don't have to worry too much about the flow management. We do it, right? That's, that's done for everyone. And then if you want to do some custom middle box uh, event processing, you can use it, our API to do that, right? So basically, that is here. Why not provide Berkeley socket like API for middle boxes so that you can provide nice abstraction? And then uh, the internal TCP flow management may not be very important to you if you're interested in pattern matching algorithm, right? So we are actually building this uh, most uh, middle box network stack on top of uh, MTCP, actually. We are trying to uh, remove the API, the user level API, to create new API for it. And then, uh, well, uh, again, we're using uh, DPDK as a base. But we, we reuse the MTCP flow management for uh, building middle box uh, stack. So this is a, a network stack specialization for middle boxes. And then we provide nice abstraction for sub-TCP layer, not on top of TCP, right? Sub-TCP layer uh, middle box operations. Key concept, separate the implementation of the uh, flow management from the custom real important logic, right? Firewall detecting is important, right? A pattern matching is more important. And then flow management, why do you need to know about flow management? Uh, also, in order to support this concept, we actually provide the event, but that's, that should be easily definable by the user. I want to create an event on retransmission. I want to know, I want to uh, run a function only when there is a three duplicate act, acknowledgement, right? So we actually provide a nice API for defining a user, user defined event and the generation. The benefits, again, uh, is clean, Modular development, and you can actually reduce the number of, number of lines greatly if you, if you want to write custom middle box. Uh, and then uh, in our uh, uh, experience, we could reduce the an order of magnitude of, of source code reduction when you use flow management, our flow management, because you don't have to write your own flow management. And it's optimized, uh, high, it prov provides the performance from uh, MTCP uh, implementation. So here's, so, just the overall, uh, very basic uh, introduction of the uh, uh, into working. So in order to provide uh, flow management for middle box, actually that's middle box is, uh, is, is standing in the middle of the client and server. That means that you need to manage both TCP stacks. You need to simulate actually both sim the TCP stack. So uh, like TCP client sends a sin to create a connection. Then you need to update the client size uh, TCP stack. Okay, so you need to simulate what this uh, TCP uh, client uh, stack is doing, and then when you receive, so and also it receive it uh, updates the server side because the TCP state wise is different, right? So TCP uh, client's uh, TCP state is sin sent, but server side you just receive TCP sin, so you are you, you are in the uh, state of TCP, TCP uh, sin, sin received. So this is different, right? So you need to manage these stacks differently. And then uh, when there is a sin act, you update uh, 
uh, server-side uh, TCP stack. And then you make this <coughs> client-side TCP stack to make this uh, connection as, as it's established. So, so we, all, we do this automatically for you. And if you're interested in any of these events, you can actually create an event and hook the event up to the uh, kernel. And you can process your own function. Okay, you don't have to write this code, but you just focus on writing on your uh, uh, core logic. Okay? Then uh, we hope that will reduce uh, a lot of uh, development effort and then make a lot of different uh, the uh, custom uh, middle boxes. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so the conclusion, uh, we built uh, MTCP and, then, um, and it's open sourced. Uh, it's high performance user level uh, TCP stack using uh, DPDK for, to optimize for um, multi-core uh, systems. So we improve performance by using extreme parallelism and batch processing. So we have per-core uh, uh, resource management. And then we also, although I didn't talk about a lot, but in the implementation, we try to avoid logging it as much as possible. Because there, there is only two threads having, having a, uh, sharing the state, right? Actually, producer uh, and uh, consumer logic. And then you can actually uh, avoid, the, avoid creating a lot. So log-free data structures and ca cache aware uh, threading. Actually, you can uh, look at our source code we carefully uh, designed the data structures. And then we, we tried to, we eliminated uh, system call overhead, of course, because we don't use system call. But we introduced the, the context switching overhead, but we amortized the overhead by using event batching. And then at the end, uh, it improves the uh, performance a lot. And then uh, for small message transactions, improves uh, performance by factor of three to 25. And then uh, the benefit actually is uh, 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 can be uh, shared to the uh, real applications, SSL shader, light HPD, HA proxy, and Nginx. Okay. So that's all I have to say. Uh, maybe I finished too early, uh, about seven minutes left. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Steve from Intel. Um, I have one question is, as you mentioned that MTCP have been open source uh, on GitHub for quite a few years. Right. And uh, uh, so far we saw that it's still be an open source project, but not a community project. Right. And you mentioned that uh, you are going to, uh, be beyond MTCP, you are going to look at the uh, uh, MOS, yeah, middle uh, box, which yeah. in a middle box. Right. And the strategy is quite aligned with the uh, FIDO project, which which Jim uh, introduced uh, uh, in their first session, okay. FIDO, uh, which is, from, uh, is by Linux Foundation. Right. So uh, in your view, and does it, uh, uh, because probably in my view, it's a good candidate to be our sub-project in the FIDO. So what, what, what do you thought? Well, I think, yeah. yeah. So the goal, my goal is to, uh, to see whether this is actually working. I'm an academic guy. So I want, I, I have an idea and then want to implement it and then share the benefit to all the people. So if it's the greater way of distributing the code and then interacting with it, other people, we are all, all fine. Problem is that I don't have many students, so we have manpower issue. So, but I hope if, if you're interested in, in, uh, in, in work, I think we can collaborate and then, and then we can share uh, maybe load across the people. So I'm, 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 um, I'm very uh, uh, positive about, uh, I, I didn't know about the FD.io, but I looked at it up, it seems to be starting, and there is TLDK, uh, so I'm, that I'm very interesting. So also most, we'll release the code for most, too. It's almost ready, and we are writing man pages, actually. Uh, we, we need to publish it somewhere, <laughs> but I, I don't see any problem. So, I'm, I'm all fine, and then we'll, we'll be possibly collaborate with, with other people, actually. OK, thanks. Cool. It's a nice project. Uh, I'm Dan Lee from Tsinghua University. Uh, thanks for the good talk. I have a technical question. Uh, you see that uh, you uh, realized the uh, EPO in MTCP. Um, but I will know that uh, the networking socket and the file descriptors 
share the same uh, uh, FD space. Right. So the application may uh, call EPO. Okay. So, so there are two EPOs. One EPO. We create the kernel. EPO also. Uh -huh. so, so we so not just uh, so we, we're not using kernel level EPO. We're using uh -huh. we actually implement EPO ourselves. Yeah. So, so the file descriptor is completely oblivious to the kernel. Uh -huh. Kernel does not know anything about our file descriptor. File descriptor. This is just usual file descriptor. Then, how do you di uh, differentiate the uh, two kinds of uh, file uh, FDs? That's a networking socket and uh, the so we don't FDs for files. We don't. Currently, we don't. So, so the integration between real file descriptor from the uh, the kernel uh -huh. and our our file descriptor is difficult actually. So we so this is for specializing uh, some server. And then you need to know this distinction. We are using our own file descriptor space in, in the usual, uh, usual level. And that's not known to the kernel. And then uh, you can still use kernel level API, kernel level uh, system calls. You can still open up the file and then read the file, right? But, uh, but you cannot use a kernel, <laughs> kernel space file descriptor and our file descriptor in the same EPO. Uh, I know. So then you need to modify the application to, to support that. Uh, do we, does it modify the application? Yeah, the, 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 the source code of the application so to differentiate that. The modification, yeah, if you are dealing with a file descriptor that's not, uh, that's not the, uh, the network file descriptor, right, then you need to be careful. But if you're dealing with network file descriptor, like socket, right, for socket, then just uh, converting that into MTCP on the bar, EPOL, MTCP on the bar, uh, socket, uh, works mostly uh, in, our, in our experience. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, thank you, it's a very good talk. Uh, this is Kai Zhang from Uni University of Science and Technology of China. Uh, I have two questions for you. Uh, the first, uh, so you mentioned you use batch to amortize the right. overhead, right? So as we know, the batch will increase the latency. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So how much latency we should compromise to get a higher, uh, I mean, throughput? So in our paper, it was published in uh, 2004, NSDI, uh, even if it do, even if you wait all the packets that, that's in the Rx queue, right? Uh, that increases uh, the latency about milliseconds. One, mil, one or two milliseconds. Maybe this is too big for data center application, right? Oh. Then you can cut down. Actually, inside the code, you can have threshold. Yeah. So if you process like uh, 100 packets, maybe you switch to, to switch back to the uh, application thread. So we can have that code. Uh, uh, we can write in that way, actually. So what I'm saying is that this latency due to the Batching can be adjustable. It is adjustable, right? Okay. Another extreme is that the there is a paper last year, uh, uh, two years ago, um, uh, OSDI. There is an IXX paper. I'm not sure if you, if you know about this. What they do is completely different. They're trying to uh, process each packet from the start to the end, so that they try to use the uh, uh, utilize the CPU data cache a lot, a lot, right? So that's called the run to completion model. So it's completely different from the batching, and that's very good performance in terms of latency. But the problem is that the code is very complicated. It, they don't have uh, Berkeley socket API, okay? Because that's deviating. So you need to process from start to end, right? Instead of waiting in, in, in like, Back, so this is different from vector uh, packet processing. You have a bunch of packets processed once, and you go to the next stage, right? Pipelining. Uh, what they what they're saying is that they're they're they're, uh, in, they're ten, they can uh, reduce the latency a lot by process each packet from the start to end, right? Uh, um, and, uh, that's called the run to completion model, yes. and it's very good in terms of TCP cache utilization, uh, but the Result API is very difficult to use. Actually, it's very everything is uh, asynchronous. No uh, FT concept, as far as I know. And then uh, I know that the uh, their source code is not released even after two years. So 
so if, if you want to, so if your goal is to minimize latency, maybe you can think about that, that approach. But if, you, uh, if you're buying with few milliseconds of delay, okay, then a batch processing with this one is not bad, actually. It, it improves uh, throughput. Okay. Uh, so uh, another question also related is, uh, why do you uh, implement an MTCP as a, another thread? Why do, don't you just implement it as a library? I mean, uh, Li so yeah. Basically, it's a library, uh, library API. But, but if, it, if you don't have a separate thread, then how do you process the asynchronous timers? Right? There is a timers, right? The rich transmission timer has to, has to trigger regardless of what application is doing. So there is a, a like time wait timer too, uh, act uh, the rich transmission timer, that's inherent in TCP protocol, and then uh, if 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 it's really a library, in, and then if if uh, that call is not done uh, until you call one of these uh, the MTCP API, then if the application too busy with something else, then you lose the like uh, the opportunity to send rich transmission packet, and that delays everything. So that's why actually we separate this uh, application thread and then uh, TCP thread. But in terms of application, it looks like a library. So you, it's a library, but that's making some update in the shared memory. And then when the uh, TCP thread uh, kicks in, that it reads it. So it's a very uh, uh, efficient communication through uh, uh, the shared memory, but we, we use uh, two separate uh, threads. That's, that's I, I believe that's a, uh, uh, kind of essential for providing uh, uh, Okay, thank you. Okay. Hi, Jim St. Ledger from Intel. V very good talk, so thank you. Um, for your MOS work and middle box work, what are your plans? Do you have any specific plans as it relates to Snort and Hyperscan to do sample application implementations in those projects and then feed the code in, or is that just an example that you aren't going to engage? So we have a couple of examples. Uh, we actually try to port Snort. It's just beast, actually. Uh, uh, we, we may be able to uh, the, release the, some portion of uh, Snort, but not all, maybe. That's just done. So the, the, the idea of MOS is not to port existing applications. It, it's already done. Maybe it's optimized that way. It's working fine. If you want to create a new application, new flow processing middle box, okay? let's say you are um, building a... Um, uh, uh, cellular data accounting, data accounting uh, application, a counter. In Korea, we need to, we don't, we should not account for retransmitted packet. We are very accurate. So if it's retransmitted, don't, don't count, right, for to, towards your cellular, uh, cellular data usage. In order to do that, you need to implement, uh, just for that feature, right, you, imp you need to implement flow management. If you don't do that or do, to batch up, then there might be some attacks, right? So if you, if you want to implement that kind of custom application, right, you can use it and you start using uh, this one and start your application this way instead of, uh, 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 instead of using PCAP API, that's too much. But we actually have a few examples, like kind of toy examples, Stateful Net is using full multiple CPU cores. Performance-wise, it's really, really good. So, but every, everyone, everyone can implement that or firewall, et cetera. So we will release some of the examples too, but uh, th th that's just an example for using MOS, not like, use it in the real world. Okay. But we will release the source code, uh, the entire source code soon, actually. Any other Hello. questions? I'm from uh, assistant engineer from the Ridge company. I have a question about your implementation. I saw uh, in the TCP mechanism, you involved in the conjunction uh, algorithm for the MTCMP design. My, my question is, in your MTCMP design, would you take, a con take a consideration for the TCP mechanism retransmission? TCP, I'm sorry? TCP mechanism retransmission in yeah. your MTCP design, would you take a consideration for it? 
Uh, I didn't quite yeah, I, just, yeah. yeah that part. Uh, I, I think agree. it's lead transmission. Yeah. Uh, do we implement which transmission? Yes. Yeah, of course. Which we, we try to conform to uh, the original TCP spec. So we, we do everything: flow management, uh, don't know, uh, flow control, congestion control, slow start, uh, reliable data transfer, everything actually. Yeah, maybe I can help to maybe add one of the further things that is TCP compliant, right? Compliant. Compliant. So it's a, is that production quality and T TCP implementation? Uh, so it depends on uh, where you use it. <laughs> of course, it's 20,000 lines of code, so it does not provide all the features. Okay, but basic ones, uh, simple web servers. If you want very high, if you want very high performance web server that does not use a lot of uh, like uh, uh, specific uh, special uh, features, maybe you can use it. Right, it's stable in that way, but we don't support many features actually. I, I think he want to understand a little more in terms of the lead transmission implementation. So do you write code from scratch or you borrow the code from somewhere? Uh, we, we wrote it from scratch. Actually. Okay. So we have, uh, so if you read our paper, we actually have the implementation detail about the lead transmission and then keeping the timers, time wait time, timer, et cetera. Okay, so everyone can get the source code from GitHub. Yeah. So any further question? Um, uh, thanks for your talk, Professor. I'm Gang Jinkun from NSP Research Group in Tsinghua University. I have two questions for uh, what you have talked about, about uh, MTCP. The first question is, can different kinds of applications run on the, base, on the basis of only one MTCP? Uh, currently, we don't support uh, multiple applications in one uh, physical machine. Uh, you mean so, so that's why we want to support a uh, virtual machine. So uh, you can run multiple applications in the virtual machine. Uh, I mean, uh, no, what I mean is that can more than one application run simultaneously on the basis of only one MTCP? Yeah, that's, why, that's what I'm saying. So currently, we don't support multiple applications at the same time. Oh, okay. So I, one I application uh, and, and then uh, that's running Maybe you can run uh, one application with bind, bound to the NIC currently. But uh, the better way, I think, is to uh, run the application in a virtual machine. And then each virtual machine runs one application, and you can create many virtual machines. Okay? So um, we, we want to support uh, Portio. Yeah. Uh, okay, I got it. And the second question is, uh, since MTCP is bound to application in RAT, MTCP is bound to uh, each application, uh, but uh, MTCP is, in a, is running in a polling mode. So, what about uh, what is the CPU CPU utilization of MTCP? Is it one is it one hundred percent? In in what CPU CPU utilization? I understand that part, but in, in the one hundred percent. MTCP is bound to the application rack. Bound to the application rack. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I can't translate the better. question. Uh, you mean that uh, you run MTCP and its application uh, in a single pro uh, process, right, right, right? right? But MTCP, for example, if you use the DBDK, it's, it's run in polling mode. Ah, yeah. It, it will occupy 100% CPU resource. Then how about the performance of the application? Actually, uh, uh, so we, the original version was using our IO engine. It's called a sh uh, package shader. I win, which is very similar to DPDK. I think it's prior to DPDK. <laughs> Performance is really good, and then we actually support interrupt. So in that sense, uh, we don't actually have, uh, uh, we actually use CPU cycle slightly more efficiently, but we lack a lot of uh, features. So we switch to DPDK. As you say, DPDK is polling. So yes, uh, it's, it's always 100%, actually. Uh, but, but but there is a context switch between uh, the uh, TCP, TCP stack and then uh, the, uh, the application. So even if, it, even, if it, even if the PDK is polling, the performance didn't actually degrade that much, actually. When there is nothing to do, actually, actually uh, uh, switch back to the thread. I don't know why. <laughs> but I hope the DPDK will support uh, the uh, uh, interrupt. I, I heard that the interrupt version is actually released, right? Yeah, it's already there. Yeah, yeah. So we, we will actually uh, incorporate that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have one last, maybe one more question. Okay. So 
OK， 好，那就谢谢大家，嗯。